speaking of quotes, if someone said to you, Tony, recommend me a few books, not your own. I, listen, I love Unshakable. I love <laughs> I within, it. but <laughs> any other books, what would be the books you would recommend to me? These are the must reads that you need to, you need to check out. How many? <laughs> I, uh, let's do a Mount Rushmore, four. Or, no, let's do five. Top five, five. of- uh, Holy shit, that's not easy. because When somebody asks me that, I get to ask that question a lot. I always ask, well, what do you want? What's the area? But if you're asking me generically for me, uh, one of the books that changed my life in the early, early stages was Man's Search for Meaning. In fact, I'm making the film right now of his movie. We're, we're just getting the script done and moving forward. I worked on it for about three years to get the rights. And um, if you don't know the book, if you're in a tough spot, go read that book. It, um, you know, Viktor Frankl was a um, Viennese uh, Jewish uh, man who got locked up in World War II and watched his family be slayed in front of him in a Nazi concentration camp. But he stayed alive by studying what made certain people live because you'd lose the will there. There was it was it was an unholy, an unholy place would be the nicest way of describing inhuman. And he said that what he noticed was that the people that had a reason, that could find reason even in their suffering. Like they're gonna make it through this so they could tell the story so it could never happen again. You know, the famous never again Jewish phrase. He said, those people found a way to survive. The ones that gave up and didn't have a compelling future. And I think that's what's missing right now, by the way, for so many people in the middle of COVID, they see no compelling future. And that's why they're overdoing drugs or alcohol because it's like, I'm out of control. But I learned so much from him and so much from the book that no one can take. They can take your money, they can imprison you, can do everything, but they can't take away your will, your will to find meaning in your life. So I think that's a book, whenever someone's in a tough place, and I, if I had to recommend one book, another book that you read in 30 minutes is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, which really reminds you that you are not just a creature of circumstance, that thought is creative, and that as you think, so you create, so you become, so you experience. You can read it in 30 minutes. Um, Another book, uh, Emerson's Essays. Waldo Emerson, I mean, his self-reliance essay is one of my favorites. I've probably read it since the 1700 times. It's just reminding you what you're capable of and not to just drop into group think. I mean, it'd, it'd be an important book to read at a time like right now. Um, maybe a, a more modern book, uh, maybe Untethered Soul, you know, by uh, Michael Singer, he's a good friend of mine, Mickey Singer. A brilliant book that gives you a just different view of spirituality, not religion, but spirituality and how you live your life. Um, that's four. Um, all right, fifth would be The Fourth Turning. Not a well-written book, but a brilliant book. Uh, President Clinton recommended I get the first book that these authors wrote, which was called uh, Generations. It's about an 800-page book, and it goes through 500 years of, of, um, of English and American history. And it shows you that every generation reacts to the way they were brought up and it changes the culture, just as we're experiencing right now. Uh, the, the rise of the millennial generation and the way they were raised, where everything was at their fingertips, where they expected everything to be available, didn't have to be charged for it. You know, charge me for an app? Something that in my generation you'd pay $500 for, they're pissed if you're gonna charge them five bucks for it, it should be free. And so it has to do with, there's nothing wrong with a generation, it's just they're brought up differently. They have different expectations, they have different fears, they have different reactions, and how that creates the cycles of history. So fourth turning, if you're wondering what's happening right now, I read that book the first time in 1991 when everyone was talking about slowing down and the, and the society's gonna shrink and everyone's gonna simplify their life, which was all bullshit. It, did, it worked for about six months. And it talked about these cycles and I found it to be really a great tool for understanding what's happening in society and what to anticipate is gonna happen in the near future.